If I had to describe that game in one word, it would probably be chaos. That was just an absolutely chaotic game. The ball was everywhere, everyone was everywhere. Bournemouth, I thought, were particularly impressive. That was, it was a roller coaster of a game that. It felt almost like rock and roll football, but Liverpool not really playing through as much as I'd have liked, really. Playing more on the counter attack, and Bournemouth, Bournemouth, really, really impressive, actually, with how they got through us, how they broke us down. And I thought, they gave us a lot of problems on those wings with those balls into the box. But I mean, Canarsi and Van Dijk just dealing with them resolutely. Every time it was just out the box, you know, a clearance, headers, every time. And it was fantastic. A, a really good team performance, but I was slightly concerned with how many chances we did give Bournemouth. You know, you can never be upset with a 3-0 win as a, as a football fan. A 3-0 win is always fantastic, you know, and it's fine margins really when it comes to football, just because it's such a low scoring sport. But I thought the amount of times Bournemouth sort of had the ball in and around our box and, you know, they were looking to create, looking for that through ball, cutting in and getting that shot on goal, it was particularly worrying. And I, I think the amount of shots, they actually had more shots than we did on their goal at Anfield. Regard, uh, a lot of them being off target, of course, but still, I thought that was one part of our game that we can kind of improve. You know, that looks like something that, you know, we, ha we haven't really had much of a problem with that over the past few games. You know, against United, obviously not against um, not against Forest really either, Brentford or Ipswich. We've been quite good at keeping them away from our goal. But Bournemouth, Semenyo and Sinistera in particular, I thought, really brought something else and gave us something to think about defensively. It was really difficult for us. Some standout performers for me, obviously the main man, Ryan Gravenberch. What a player he has turned into. Is there a genuine, you know, debate to be had? where he is considered one of the best midfielders in the Premier League. He is, it seems like the levels he's reached under Arnie Slot recently has just been absolutely ridiculous. And, you know, he doesn't really look like slowing down. Every game, it is just incredible performance after incredible performance. And I thought, you know, the amount of interceptions he's making and the through balls, like some of the times where he'll just recover the ball from nowhere, you know, Bournemouth have it kind of seemingly securely and Bomb Gravenberg, sorry, Gravenberg just comes in, he takes it out of nowhere and suddenly we're on the attack and we're creating. And I think that was so powerful for us and created, gave, gave us a lot of opportunities that we probably should have done better with. Another, so yeah, Gravenberg was just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Probably my man of the match again, even after AC Milan, I thought, we really lose Gravenberg this season. It's gonna be, it's gonna be problematic. Or McAllister, just because Looking at that bench, you know, at the start of the game, when we saw the lineups, I, I saw the I saw the subs and I was thinking to myself, we don't really have many midfield subs at all. I look on the bench and it's just Curtis Jones. So we're really not working with much with regard to, you know, having a backup midfield to Gravenberg and McAllister. It's really looking like they're going to have to play almost 90 minutes every game, which they really shouldn't have. They really just shouldn't have to do. Considering that we want to compete for the biggest trophies, the biggest uh, rewards, we can't really afford to have McAllister and Gravenberg playing 90 minutes in that hybrid role every game. It's just not really feasible. So I think, you know, maybe in January, are we going to have to go back in for a midfielder, a certain midfielder that should go nameless, that should go nameless on this channel, unless, you know, unless we need to name him. But honestly, yeah, it's looking really thin in that midfield department really really thin obviously the Harvey Elliott injury does not help at all but yeah that was that was one part that was something that I felt we really kind of it looked a bit scary on the bench but moving on from that I thought there were so many positives to take from that game Luis Diaz of course being one of them he looks like a top five winger in the world right now he looks absolutely fantastic he looks outrageous every time he gets in those goal scoring scenarios that he did under Klopp he seems to just be kind of he seems to be finishing it he seems to be creating and, you know, there was really no worries. It was such a tidy performance from Luis Diaz. Getting back as well to defend, that's something that I respect so much from him as well. His work rate is just, it's almost midfielder-like, his work rate. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. More players, um, more players that I thought played really well. Darwin Nunez, I'm so happy for him. Absolutely ecstatic for him. The guy, you know, he hasn't really had much of a chance this season. He hasn't really played that many minutes. He's sort of come off... On the, off the bench here and there, you know, for sort of 15, 20 minutes, if he's lucky, really. It's been closer to 10 minutes and, you know, not really done too much. But I think what Slot saw from him against AC Milan in those sort of 20 minutes and what I saw as well, kind of getting back. I remember a few times where he sort of comes back to, towards our goal and wins us the ball when the, the, atta the attacking player from AC Milan, they're not expecting it at all. And he just wins us the ball back. 
and we can go and attack from there. And that is that kind of work rate and that ability to defend and get back is something that we've really we've really needed. And you know, Jota not being as mobile as Darwin Nunez. But also I think just his ability to finish those ridiculous shots. Like how many how many times have we seen Nunez just cut in like that, whether it's on the left or the right, and just put it top bins or you know put it away so tidily like he did today? It was just absolutely fantastic, and to see him and to see him being so emotional and cry, you know, almost crying at the at the flag after that, I thought it was absolutely incredible for him, and I could not be happy happier for him, and I could really not be happier for him. Just kudos to him. It was a really really good performance. You can never be sad with a three 0 win. At Anfield, and you know we did give him chances, and I think on another day it may not have gone our may not have gone our way, but it, today it did, and that's all that really matters. Mo Salah didn't have his best game, but you know that is to be expected. I think he's played almost ninety minutes in every game for us so far this season. He's probably due a rest, which is why I was kind of surprised when Chiesa and Gakpo were coming on that Salah wasn't one of the ones to be brought off. I was thinking, you know, a, a direct Chiesa for Salah swap would be more appropriate. You know, give Salah a bit of a rest. But the manager tries Chiesa up front and Gakpo on the left, obviously. I was, I was really scared when they came on. When I saw Chiesa and Gakpo, Gakpo coming off sorry for Nunez and Diaz, I was thinking, oh no. Oh no, he's not about to put Gakpo as striker. After, after the performance he had against AC Milan, we're not, about to revert, we're not about to revert to Klopp Gakpo, are we? And my heart, for a brief moment, I was thinking, yeah, that's, that, those were my thoughts. And I was scared, but thankfully... Thankfully, it's Chiesa up front, which was which was quite refreshing, and a really solid debut from him. A really solid debut from him when he when the ball sort of drops over his head at the start, uh, like at the start of his debut there, and he just pot punts it from like Mars, <laughs> really speculative volley, but he just goes for it. You got to respect that. And I was I was thinking that's gonna be a that's a pretty uh, elusive way to start your debut. A really you know dynamitey type way to start your debut, and I respect that. And I respect that. And he he could have had a goal. He he was offside. But he hits the post anyway, and I thought he looked really bright. His pressing energy as well was something that I, I saw and I really liked. I liked in him. Wondering if you know, sort of where his position will be in the future. You know, if Slot doesn't really fancy Jota right now, the form he's in, not really goal scoring form, can't really create. His touch has been off. Maybe Chiesa sees a little stint at striker. Who knows? But really, I thought he would be kind of Salah's uh, understudy or coming in for Salah to give him some rest when we need him to, because I thought that was a perfect opportunity to do that. But obviously not. And it, I mean, it worked fine. But I did think Salah in that game was particularly poor. The amount of times he kind of got the ball, drove in. I felt, I thought we just kept the ball for too long that game. Like he, he was on the ball for just too long. He couldn't get it out of his feet. Or he could, but he just he seemingly wouldn't get, get it out of his feet. He clearly wants a goal and he clearly wants to, you know, be competing up there with Haaland. And of course, you've got to respect that. But ultimately, this is a team and we really needed Salah to be a bit better today. Uh, maybe maybe he doesn't start against West Ham. In fact, I think I'd be quite surprised if he starts against West Ham. I think Salah is due a rest, maybe coming on in the 60, 70th minute against West Ham, really. But really, ultimately, a really sound performance, scoring three goals. Bournemouth probably getting a bit too much joy on the wings and just in general, really. Like in terms of their shots, a lot of shots, but... We won the game 3-0. We won the game 3-0. And Kelleher as well. What a fantastic performance. Keeping a clean sheet. We have the most clean sheets in the league now with four. Incredible. I've forgotten who we have next. We have West Ham in the, in the, in the League Cup, but I've forgotten who we have after that in the league. But bring it on. I'm feeling really, really confident. I'm, re I'm really feeling good about this side. I think. I think we've got a lot of balance. And coming into January, can we reinforce? Can we get a midfielder in, you know, to just strengthen even further? Those are my general thoughts on the game. Maybe check out one of these videos if you enjoyed that. Me just sort of talking to the camera, giving my thoughts on the game afterwards. And I really enjoy this because it just kind of feels like a way to get how I feel off the game, about the game off my chest. Yeah, maybe I'll see you next time.